don't have a car here, um, but hopefully it's hopefully it's getting growing some speed somewhere. Although we were uh, second in practice today, in warm up today, that's kind of a good sign because that's you know when you're you find you do all your final tweaks in the car just before uh, the race starts, and hopefully you know, hopefully you went the right direction. But it seems like we did because again, Bill was peachy in warm up today. Um, just since we don't have a car to talk about, I think the most important thing that we can convey to you is kind of like what our strategy is for today, so that when you're watching the race, you'll actually know what happens, why we're going to pit, when we're going to pit, kind of stuff like that. And obviously we can't, we don't know exactly what we're going to do, but Don does have um, some ideas, um, and it's all really based upon tire, uh, the tire day, like how bad your tire falls off. And obviously we want to take advantage of um, of going fast when we can on new tires or good tires. Uh, but then again, uh, if we follow the leader, uh, you can have fresh tires, but you can't get anywhere with them, right? So, Don, why don't you explain, uh, why don't you explain just the strategy of the, of the race today? Um, of if it goes with no yellows, basically what it would be, and then if it goes with yellows, what it would be. Yeah, so this, this track is, uh, it's for any that driven it, you can sort of get off track and not get in a lot of trouble. So what that really means is that the probability of a lot of yellows is low because you leave the track, you probably hit the dirt, you come back on, you don't don't have a lot of those things. Last year, I think we had one yellow, and a couple years we had no yellows. You sort of got to plan your race around the fact that you're not going to get a lot of, a lot of help with sort of dabbing in before a yellow, etc. cetera. Um, and relatively, this is a fuel efficient track for us. You know, if you think about Daytona or Sebring, we have lots of long straights where you're flat out, you know, you're very fuel inefficient there. So that means our, our window here is longer. So we can get over 60 minutes on a, on a tank of fuel, 97 liters of fuel here, right? So in a two hour, 40 minute race, that sort of leaves you a lot of options of when you might want to pit. So that option then falls back to when do you want to pit with no yellows. It's based on how fast you can go on a set of tires. And we start on one set, and we're gonna add two more sets during the race. And in the first 10 laps, they'll they'll run X. The next 10 laps, they'll run X plus one second. The next 10 laps, as an odd, X plus two seconds. Probably on average is what you'll see, probably for every car. So the deg is pretty consistent. So the way I think of it for your Formula One fans is we sort of have this DRS advantage. Once we pick, you're gonna be faster than everybody else that's already on track by a second and two seconds a lap. So the question is, when do you want to use it? And you'll, you'll and for any of you that watch a lot of this racing, you, know, you have ten manufacturers. It likely, will be nose to tail, nose to tail, nose to tail. It's a very hard track to pass at. Um, and so the only way to really pass is sort of look for that opportunity to maybe undercut and sort of come in early because you can do that with the big fuel windows, put fresh tires on, and maybe pass somebody in the pit, so to speak. Because by the time they pit, you're going to be seconds ahead of them when they come out. However. You, if you can, since you're stopping multiple times in this, they can use it against you too. So you got to be very careful where you use that power, so to speak, sort of undercut or overcut, depending on what you want to do in this race. Um, we're going to do something a little bit different today because we're going to have Robbie start, Bill probably do the middle stint, and Robbie do the end stint. So we're going to switch it up a little bit today too, um, just to see what uh, what occurs there. Make sense? Cool. All right. <laughs> so why don't, why don't questions for Don on that? Because he went very fast. I didn't get any of it, but whatever. So I don't know. It's not important. He never has. Uh, questions, questions about that? Yes. Is there someone sitting there with a spreadsheet with like degradation curves and there's that's more, you? There's me multiple people and, that are in that. And engineer, we both use deg curves and we look exactly what's going on. Not just with our car, with every car. So we have data coming in about the lap times with every single car when they put on tires, when they hit it, how long the pit was, and we watch it through the stand. Basically, that's, the that's, whole field. that's how we know when we can sort of, sort of take advantage of others that have done this. It's really important that you know what they did 50 laps ago is relevant to when they stop them, when they need to stop, how long they're going to go on a tank. So we use that as part of the calculation to know when to do that. Pretty Does cool. Turner have their own way of doing this compared to other teams? Uh, you mean strategy? You mean uh, oh, the, the tools we use? Data, yeah, a lot of us use. There's probably the most common use software. It's a, it's a, it's a software called Race Tools, and I'd say the majority of the teams now start to use that. But it's just data. So the question is, how do you use the data, right? And there's a, there's a hundred versions of it you can use during a race, and you can get overwhelmed there very easily, right? And quite often, even yesterday, we had to make a decision within 15 seconds of seeing an incident to make a decision to come in 
And the truth is, I can't make a decision in 15 seconds, but I knew on my curve of decisions, I had 10 options. That was one of my options, and I knew if I took that option, I could I could use it very quickly. So that's the way to think about it. Hey, I know what you learned yesterday. Does it inform today any differently? Say I'm cracked. Well, <laughs> I was going to say that. But... Um, well, you know what's always interesting about the GS races is that it's, it's yellow, 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 yellow. Yeah. And so we play a very different strategy based on high probability of, I always say yellows breed yellows. And um, so when you have one, you have two, three, four. And so it changes your whole field strategy, change your tire strategy. But what's interesting about yesterday and today, similarly, is deck is the same. So we also knew that giving four fresh tires to these guys yesterday, they were in separate cars yesterday, was a big advantage, especially for Bill at the end, that four fresh tires when every not every other car did. Uh, his were a little bit less because of the strategy we had to play with them. He had 20 minute longer ones, but it was still an advantage to put fresh tires out for that last hour. You really needed it because even different for the non aero cars of yesterday, it made them pass relatively easily compared to the cars today and worked very different than the past. One of the other strategies is don't swallow him, so. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions about strategy? Want to talk about the cars a little bit? Sure, yeah. So we have a Obviously a brand new car here. We raced the M6 here for many years. Um, so this weekend is a bit of a test for us. We rolled off the truck pretty fast. We were quick in the first practice and we've been constantly evolving. So for us, this new car, every time we come to a new track, we're changing things and trying to learn more about it. So we think we have a good package for the race, um, but you're gonna see a lot of different strategies play out. Like there'll be a car that's kind of sleeping in the back that you don't think is really gonna come to the front and all of a sudden, be a situation and that car's in the front. So this race is interesting because it, the lap times can fall off as you go over the stint. So keep, keep in mind, like, you know, watch for cars. Like, if we end up going back, that might be strategic to the end of the race and things like that. So there's a lot of things to account for at this track specifically. But we're loving the new car for now. Like, like Robbie said, last year with the F6, we knew what it was going to do at every track. We were, we were so refined on it. A minor adjustment to we're going to do exactly this. Every track we go to with this new M4, it's a little bit of a mystery. Like, we don't, we know, we see the charts, we see it's going to dig off, but we don't really know what it's going to do. Maybe the thing is going to do X and it's going to do Y. So, we're learning with every race that we go to. Uh, we're going to try something different. We never, I don't think we've ever tried new finishing. I'm, I'm just, this, I have, this, is, this is the cryptid I know for me. This place just does not want to give it to me. A year ago, I was leading the race. I had a tire fail. This year, I was leading the race, and I barely, it was five minutes ago, six minutes ago, I barely dropped the wheel off just before, like you do a thousand times. And it instantly, Robbie was right behind me, instantly blew the tire. I'm like, you've got to be kidding. So we're sitting third of the points. That would have been something second in the points. Instead, now we're going to climb our way out of the hole for the rest of the year. Very depressing. So we're gonna try something different just on Robbie's pure skill and luck alone. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're qualifying P3 if you didn't know that, right? But what's interesting today, which is for all season, is the, the pro cars and the GTD cars are running together, right? Yeah. And so we have three pros, then a D, then a pro, then us. And then you have pros behind us. And so they're competing for two different races, right? And we're going to want to get around each other. They're going to want to get around us. We don't want to separate ourselves from them. So watch out for that today, too. It'll be very interesting to watch on track. Are going to do that more this season, or is that just a one-time deal? Which part? Mixing up the pros. That, that's, that's, uh, that's the new norm. Although the, yeah, yeah. the next two tracks we go to, no pro cars are going. So okay. Mid Ohio and Detroit is deed only. So they're, they're going to mix it up a little bit uh, during the season. But that's always the case. Anybody have any questions? Anything? Yeah. For the drivers, you had a lot of success with the M6, and uh, uh, and uh, the M4 seems like it should be a smaller car, but it doesn't look any smaller when you look at it. Lighter, nimbler, kind of. Uh, I mean, dimensionally, it's very similar, actually. I think what you see, it looks smaller if you look at it you know, from the front. The frontal area is less, and it looks a little bit sleeker and stuff. Yeah. The overall length is pretty much the same, and the width is slightly narrower. Um, but the BMW engineers have taken what we knew from the M6. We had a couple of deficiencies, and they tried to address that with this car. So we go through low-speed corners much better. It's more nimble in that way, like you say, and 
better traction, it's bit nicer on the tires, so it's an evolution. It's a totally different car, it doesn't really resemble the M6 at all, to be honest, but uh, it's great in a lot of ways, and we like it so far. You like the braking? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so um, that's, that's probably one of our, it seems to be, I'm not sure, it, it feels like it breaks good, but then we seem to always not be quite as good as the competition. That is the only thing you could have said that we need to work on. Yeah. And all the teams, whether it's the Ray Hall guys, us, or um, or Paul Miller, we're all trying different brake pad packages, different like leverages for the brakes, all kinds of stuff, ABS control packages. So that is something we're getting into. It seems to be the only, and only in certain, Certain straight lines, you're fine, but in certain bending conditions, it doesn't seem to like as well. It's interesting. I mean, it, it, obviously, we're developing, like the M6, as Bill said. We took it to a racetrack, and based on the weather and based on the track condition, we would go like this. And now we're learning a whole new can of worms. So, we change one thing, it gives us that. We're just building a library of knowledge. And we found a pretty solid setup today, we think. We still have some things that we can improve on, but it's a constant evolution. The M6 was running for six years. By the end of that six years, it's dialed. Now we're working on that process. It's a fun process, too. We enjoy it. You guys able to get some info from Ray Hall? Yeah, yeah. probably yeah. sure. Get a little bit. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Exactly. That's, that's the good thing about this deal. When you get a car from the factory right. and, and they're running it, Whatever they do, they put it out. So you now, I mean, I would be mortified if the car said it went out. But that's something they offer, and it's it's good. You know, so if you're a little lost and you see that they're going good, you can see what exactly what they've done and sort of migrate uh, to them. Right. And our setups are more different than you might want to yeah. play. Yeah. Yeah. We're not identical. Yeah. Yeah. No. BMW grab that information from all the imports around it in Europe too, and share yeah. Yeah. pieces of that. Every tire, whether it's a head hook, a Pirelli, a Michelin, there's a book of everywhere they've gone, and you get to see every setup that they've developed. And the car's pretty interesting because uh, they try to make it super user friendly. I don't know if you guys have heard about it. Normally, you put a different tire on, the diameter is different, traction control has to be different, ABS has to be different. Now you just go on the dash and you have the port. You actually hit a button down here and it'll tell you what tire you selected, what, and it automatically reprograms the traction control, the ABS, you know, everything all. All in there, all in. Nice. Very user friendly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
everything is adjusted. You can change where the suspension goes, dampers, wings. Like there's 150 different permutations the way you can change. So we're gonna keep changing and learning and learning, and we can't learn fast enough. So that's the big. That's the big. Hey, why don't you guys go learn? Now we, we have to go. We have yeah. to so guys also pit stop practice. If you want to announce that to everybody. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. 11, everybody, so we're at the live pit stop practice today at the beginning of the fan walk at 11:20. It'll be fun to watch the crew do their thing a couple times. Yeah, that, that close. Well, so why don't you guys bail? Yeah, we're right, right, yeah. yeah. right. Sorry, did I miss anything? No. Nah, All the things that about you, they don't need to buy anything, right? Just to buy them tacos. I'm successful. That's about it. So, cool. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks, guys.